In today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to add some shake to our camera. Now this can be used when your player takes a hit or has a, an extremely high jump or fall, or really just anything that you want to add a little bit of excitement to your scene for, or really anything that you want to kind of add some excitement to some sort of event in your game for. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it works. So we've already got our camera clamp that we're using. This just clamps the camera as far as, as how far it can go up and down, left and right. And actually, instead of adding it in here, I'm going to go and create a new script for it. It's probably going to be a little bit easier to understand if it's not mixed in with some other code. And plus, it'll make a great homework assignment when you have to combine them. <laughs> so I'm going to call this Shake Cam. And I'm going to throw 2D into it because I'm only going to shake it on X and Y. If you wanted a 3D version where you're shaking it on Z, you could go ahead and add that in as well. Just instead of using vector twos, we'd use vector threes. Since I'm using an orthographic camera, there's really no sense in shaking it on Z because it does absolutely nothing. So let's go ahead, open this up in mono develop. And let's clear everything out. And we're going to be moving the camera. That means I am going to need to go ahead and grab that transform. We're going to be doing it every frame. So I like to cache it anyway. Great. I think the only other Unity method I'm using is going to be update. Now to get our camera to shake, I'm going to go ahead and set a Boolean value up. And I'm just going to go flick that on and off when I want it to shake. I am going to make it public just because I want to be able to play around with it inside of the inspector. I guess not public. It's still going to be private. But I'm going to make it a serialized field. And of course, it's a bool. And I'm just going to say, shake me. And I'll start that off as false. I'm going to come down to update and just check to see if that flag is set. So if we're supposed to be shaking me, go ahead and do it. But I'm actually going to check for the negative. If we're not supposed to be shaking, return. Don't do anything else in this method. This way here, everything under here is going to be for shaking the camera. All right, so let's jump back into Unity. And there's three things I want to be able to control with the shake. How much shake as far as how much distance we travel per shake, how fast we change directions, and how long the overall shaking period is going to be. So let's go ahead and create some serialized fields for those so we can go expose those in the inspector. They're all going to be type float. And we'll start off with the duration. So shake, dir. And I don't know what to start mine off by. So I'm going to say maybe half a second. Might be too long, might be too short. I don't know. We can always go ahead and adjust that later. So the next serialized field, again, type float. And I'm going to call it shake offset. I'm going to set that to maybe 10. And this is how much from where we originally started, as far as the camera position goes, how far we can shake in any one direction. And one more serialized field, I'll type float, and shake frequency, the time in between movement. And it's going to want to be a small number, maybe a tenth of a second. We'll try that. Now, all of these are going to be based off our original position. So I'm going to want to store that too. And I'm just going to store a vector two for it. I only care about the X and the Y. Now there's a few different ways that we can actually go ahead and get our camera to start shaking. One is to set up some sort of event system. So when we have an event where we want the camera to shake, we go ahead, raise the event, and this method is called and the camera shakes. Another is just to go ahead and create a public method here that we can just simply call every time we want the camera to shake. It really, it doesn't matter how you want to implement it, whatever's going to work best for you. For me right now, I think I'm just going to go ahead and create a public method, which is not going to return anything. And I'm just going to call it shake for now. We can add an overload later to pass in parameters, but for now I'm just going to call it shake. And what I want to do is to go ahead and set the original position to be equal to my current camera position. So think of this as, you know, your starting point. I'm going to go ahead and take that shake me flag and make equal true. 
And we're also going to need some sort of timer to know when to stop shaking. So let's go ahead and we'll add that as well. And I'm just going to call it shake timer. And I'm going to start it off at zero up here just to be safe. Well, it does by default stick to good C sharp coding. But down here, I definitely want to make sure that we reset that timer before we try starting to shake. Then everything else is just going to take place inside of uh, the update. So we'll come in. And if we are supposed to be shaking us, this is where we're going to start. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is try to get some sort of offset. Where we're going to move from our original position to some new position. How are we going to calculate that? Now I'm actually going to use a vector 2, which I will call shake pos. I'm going to have that equal the original position, so where we started, dead center. Then I want to add something onto it. And I know I want to add some sort of random position, so let's go ahead and take a look at this class. So here we are, the Unity engine, the randomness. Uh, we've always used range before, and that works fine. We can do something, you know, from like negative one to positive one, or whatever it is that you want to set for the amount of, well, the, the range. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at something else. And I think this time around, I'm going to use the inside unit circle. And the way this works is, let's say this S is your original position. You get a radius of one, and it could be anywhere within that radius that your next position is going to be. So let's go ahead, we'll open it up, and let's take a look at it. It's actually not that hard. It's going to go ahead and return a value inside of that circle, and we can go ahead and multiply it by our offset. That way there we can move more than just one spot, or less if you want to go with the decimal. Some other options that we have not used yet, you could do the sphere if you want to do 3D, if you really need that Z. And we can also get away with value as well. It's going to turn between zero and one. Then we can just go ahead and add a, a negative to it if we wanted to. But I'm going to go ahead and stick to the inside unit circle, mostly just because we haven't used it yet. There's a lot of options here. I'm going to come in and do dot inside unit circle. And then just multiply that by our offset. There we go. And even though this multiplication is going to be done first, I still like to put my parentheses around it. You don't need them. I just find it easier when I come back reading later. I see those parentheses. I just know instantly this is first. All right, so that's going to give us a random value for X and Y as far as the shake, po shake position goes. So we'll jump in and go T dot position is equal to new vector three. And inside of there, I'll do shake pos dot X, shake pos dot Y. And since I'm not moving on Z, I'm just going to go ahead and use, well, not my transform, my t.position.z. Let's jump back into Unity. Take that clamp cam. Let's add it. And I'll just go ahead and start it up. And this actually is not going to work with my clamp cam. Because the clamp cam, well, it's going to move that camera for me every frame as well. And actually the clamp cam is being called in the late update. So after I do all those calculations and move my camera in late update, it's going to go ahead and move it back on me. So I'm not even going to see a difference. So in order to get this to work, I will have to turn off my clamp cam for now. Let's start it back up and let's do shake me. There we go. Kind of fast. <laughs> I want to slow that down a bit. And I don't want that much movement. I don't want to go ahead and change any of these values just yet. Uh, simply because what we're doing is that every half a second, we're picking a new spot. And I don't quite want it to be like that. I want it to move a little bit smoother. So instead of just being, I want it to actually shake, not just jump. I don't want it to be a jump cam. I want it to be a shake cam. So we have to have some sort of smoothing to that. So I'm going to do that right here. Uh, not right here. Not in the clamp cam. Let's go back to the shake cam. So before we go ahead and assign these positions in, we need to add a smoothing to them. And we've done this a few times already. So I'm just going to say float x is equal to mathf.smoothdamp. And we use this for our spaceship. Now we want the current position, which is t.position.x. The position we want to go ahead and try to move to, which will be shake pos dot x we need a reference to a velocity and we don't have that variable yet so we will have to go ahead and make it i'll do it now since we're up here 
And this is a float. Now I can add it down here. <laughs> it's still doing that. Stop it. And the last thing I need is how much time we want to actually smooth this over. And that's going to be the shake dir. There we go. We'll add that line. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for X. Or sorry, for Y that we just did for X. So we just switch all the X's to Y's. And velocity. Oh, but I didn't put a semicolon. That's why I keep getting those errors. Great. So now we'll go ahead, now that we have it smoothed out, we use those smooth values that we have for X and Y. And let's try those out. So we'll save it, jump back in, hit play. And then go ahead, apply the shake a bit better. Might want to start playing around with some of the speed. Uh, I think the duration is too short. So how about 0 0.15? Uh, hmm. So this is the duration. Let's make it a uh, point one. I'm going to keep the offset at 10 and the frequency is shaking too fast, I think. So we'll go ahead and add 50% to it. Mm, maybe an eight. And shake. Not enough, I think. Well, let's go ahead and take care of the timer. Then we can go and tweak with the, the values. So I have my shake timer set up. I've set it to zero when we start. So I'll say shake timer is plus equal. So we're going to add to it. We're going to add time dot delta time, which is the time difference between this frame and the previous frame. Then in the if block, we're going to say if, if shake timer it's greater than shake duration. And this is actually supposed to be shake frequency. We'll fix that in a second. That's probably what I did wrong. Anyway, shake duration. We go ahead and hit shake need to equal false. And shake frequency. This is how often we shake from point A to point B. That's, I think, why it wasn't looking right to me. Not the way I intended anyway. Okay, and with that in place, um, yeah, we'll, we'll just do a long shake. So I'll go ahead and set the duration to be, I don't know, five seconds. I'll go back to 10, because 10 units isn't that much. We'll start it up. And then when we go to click Shake Me, there we go. Now I do have it set for five seconds. You're obviously not going to want it to be that long. And this little Shake Me, I'm mostly exposing it just so I have a way to debug it. I think most of the time you'll probably want something like a half a second. So when that public method gets called, essentially this is going to happen. All right. Now we got one more thing left to do. If we notice, if I take a look at the position, and it's probably easier if I go ahead and turn off the background. Nope, let's stay in the scene view. Uh, we see the position of the camera at the end of the shake. We want to make sure it's in the exact same position as when we started. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and say, not only are we going to stop the shake, but T dot position, T dot position is going to be equal to, well, we're going to have to make a new vector for it. New vector three, original position dot X, original, oh, original position dot Y, and T dot position dot Z. That way there at the end of the shake, we end up back where we're supposed to be. I'm going to go ahead and save that off. And I think that actually might be it. Let's go ahead. We'll take a look. Uh, don't need these. But I think that's it. Let's go ahead. We'll jump in. Take a look at the code. Or take a look at it in action, I guess I should say. So if we start it up, it's going to keep going. It's not going to reset properly for us. We try to do it again. And that's because the timer is only reset up here. I'm going to add it in down here as well, but it's really just, I don't want this line here permanently because I only want it to be able to be called from up here. But for debugging purposes, it's fine. So shake 
timer is equal to zero. No, nope, not equal to negative, zero. We'll jump back in, start this bad boy back up. And now we should be able to do multiple tests. There we go. And it keeps going back to the original spot. And really now you can go ahead and just dial it into where you want it. If you want it to be a faster shake. <laughs> Actually, I think I like it at 0.5. Maybe the frequency. Let's bring that down to something like 0 0.05. So half of the original value that I was using. I think that's too fast. But anyway, you get the idea. It's working now. And you have the ability to control how long it shakes, how fast it shakes from one point to the other, and how big of a step it's going to take between the one position to the next position. And of course, we have smoothing. Go ahead, play around with different ways to actually go and generate those X and Y positions. I did it this way because it's just one line. But for homework, let's go ahead and combine these two scripts. I want to see the shake cam get added into your clamp cam. And I'll give you a couple days to work on that before I go ahead and post this one. But anyway, as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>